Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about the true or real C rating of a lithium polymer battery pack. This is essentially going to be an update video to a very similar video that we've done in the past. Except in this video, I'm going to provide you with the actual formula that I use to determine that real C rating. Now, for those of you who have not been exposed to the problem within the industry that we deal with when it comes to the C rating, the results that you can achieve or get for your specific batteries might blow you away. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm first gonna go and give you a summarization of what that C rating means as a good review. Then we're gonna talk about how it's actually established by manufacturers very briefly. We'll talk about the problem within the industry that we face. And then I'm gonna jump right into an example on how you can figure it out on your own. So let's go ahead, dive right into it. The C rating is essentially a number that is placed on the front of a battery pack that helps us identify the maximum continuous discharge current that we can actually pull from our lithium polymer batteries. That C rating has to be multiplied by the capacity in amp hour of a battery in order to determine the maximum continuous discharge. A perfect example will make it very simple. If you have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack, that is going to be five amp hours of capacity. Essentially what I did is take the 5,000 divided by 1,000, there's 1,000 milliamps in one amp, and then I'm able to get five amp hour. I take that five amp hour battery, and if I were to have a battery that delivers 10C, a rated 10C, I take the 10, multiply it by the five, and I get 50 amps of continuous discharge, and that would be the maximum for that battery. The next question is how does a manufacturer come up with this specific C rating that is applied to the labels of many battery packs? Well, this number has to be or should be what the manufacturer feels is safe for their specific batteries in order to deliver that continuous current value. And manufacturers could use formulas to go and determine what this value is. They could run their own experimental tests in order to determine that safe C rating values and then apply that to the label for their entire product line. Now when it comes to the C rating placed on the labels of battery packs, it is absolutely true that we want to use the highest C rating that our budget can allow and that we can physically get into our radio control vehicle. There's a lot of benefits that we get from having the highest C rating possible. So what we're doing when we buy our batteries is we're looking for that performance. However, if the performance that we expect out of a battery is not actually happening, that's where the problem lies. What it really boils down to is LiPo battery manufacturers can place any C rating that they want right on the front of that label. There is no set standard that they have to follow or certification that they have to jump through. And as a new hobbyist to the industry, there is no reason why you would not believe the values that they are placing on the front of those batteries. The problem that you get into is a battery that can't deliver. And that is the problem that we face. So here is essentially the formula that you can use in order to determine the true C rating of a battery. Now this formula is extremely easy. It is simply just a constant used, which is going to be 2,500 divided by the square root of the capacity multiplied by the internal resistance of a cell. The units that have to be used is the capacity is going to be placed into the formula with the unit of milliamp hour and the internal resistance is going to be placed in there under milliohms. Since internal resistance is part of the formula, we will have to use a specific procedure in order to get that value accurately. The best way to do that is to use your charger to determine this value. The most important part of this is that your battery pack didn't just come out of your radio control vehicle and now you're throwing it on the charger. You want that battery pack to be at room temperature, we'll call that about 22 degrees Celsius, and from there it has to be in that temperature for about an hour. Then you can go charge it up and take the internal resistance value that you get from your computerized charger. If you don't know how to do that, just look at the very previous video that we did and you'll see that exact procedure to determine the internal resistance value. 
The last bit of information that you need to know is that the internal resistance value has to come from the cell that has the highest internal resistance because that is the one that's going to produce the most amount of heat and fail first. So we're going to conservatively make sure that we select that cell that has the highest internal resistance and that is the input that goes into the calculator. Let's go through an example now of how we actually go through this process to determine the actual or true C rating of a lithium polymer battery pack. We're going to use a 4,000 milliamp hour battery pack that has a C rating of 45 C and it has an internal resistance of 1.2 milliohms as the highest internal resistance within the entire pack. That means that all the other cells achieved either 1.2 or a lower internal resistance for that pack. Let's head over to the radiocontrolinfo.com website and plug in our values to the appropriate calculator on that website. And here we are, we're at the radiocontrolinfo.com website. We would just want to hover over that information tab, go to RC General Calculators, and then we want to select Calculate the Real LiPo C Rating. Once we've selected that, we'll arrive at the page here where we need to go and fill out the information. If you don't know exactly what is required in each one of these boxes, we did describe it in the video, but if you forget about it or you didn't look at that part and view that part of the video, all the information is going to be here below in order to put in the correct values. Our example today is going to deal with that 4,000 milliamp hour battery pack. We measured the internal resistance of the pack and the cell that had the highest value is 1.2 milliohms. That's the highest internal resistance that we had within this six cell pack. All the other cells were 1.2 or better. The next good thing to talk about right now is that this is the internal resistance of the pack of a cell in the pack when it was brand new. As the battery pack ages, this value is going to start to increase over time. And you should not expect that a one year old pack is going to give you the exact C rating that you're expecting. A good example, we'll go through that right after we finish this off. Uh, this is a 45C pack. This is when it was brand new. All we need to do now is calculate that C rating. After hitting that button, we get the calculated C rating of 36.1. And the maximum continuous current that is recommended is 144 amps. And this is obviously based off of this 36.1 times the 4,000 milliamp hour. That's how you get this 144.4. Now, if I were to look at this battery pack today, the cell that performs the weakest now has an internal resistance of 2.1 milliohms. So now we know it's not going to give us a C rating of 36. I'm now dealing with a battery that can only put out just over about 100 amps. It's now effectively a 27C battery pack that probably doesn't deliver a, four, a full 4,000 milliamp hour as well. So something to keep in mind. And if we were to look at another scenario for a pack, a 5,000 milliamp hour pack, a pack that has a really good internal resistance considered as a good battery pack would fall around the 0 0.8 to about one milliohm. So on the high end, if we were to look at a pack of 0 0.8, we would get a C rating. If we go to the worst case scenario of the really good batteries and look at a one milliohm internal resistance as the worst cell within the pack, and we calculate what that would be, this would give us a calculated C rating of around the 35 amp uh, area there and we get a maximum continuous current of 177 amps. This would be a decent battery pack. Yeah, at this point, guys, take a look at this. Try your own battery pack. I wouldn't mind seeing exactly what you guys are getting from your internal resistance measurements. Throw that in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of capacity you're dealing with and what your highest internal cell resistance is and what that calculated C rating versus the rated C rating on the pack is. It's going to be quite impressive if you guys out there have a battery pack that actually performs better in the calculated C rating versus the pack's actual rating on the label. 
So just something that would be very interesting to see. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Now the ultimate goal that I have for this video is that we have a true understanding as to what the actual C rating is for our lithium polymer battery pack. If I didn't know any better with this specific battery pack and I didn't bring the plane down in half the time that I expected it to be up there, it could have been a very bad scenario for me when the pack gets too hot and possibly can create a fire scenario. And that's the last thing that we need in this hobby is to have fires break out because of the performance of our battery is not where it should be. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.